maybe more to the point, what have we learned about this team and the players tactically in the absence of Davies? Yeah, I think the number one thing I've learned is never try and guess what John Herbert might do. Hmm. You know, trying to pick his starting 11 is very difficult. But what it's shown me, you know, without Alfonso Davis is that they are very much more than just Alfonso Davis. And that's a message that John Herbert put to this team, you know, at the beginning of the qualifying campaign. They, they, they obviously know how important he is and they will lean on Alfonso Davis, but they're more than just Alfonso Davis. And they've got, you know, ability to, to you know, pick a team that doesn't include him. And that's, it's not just been the last two windows, right? He missed a couple of games earlier in the campaign as well for injury. Um, but you have options there. Sam Adekubi comes in on that left-hand side and has just been a, a revelation of sorts. Um, Tejon can play on both sides of the pitch, left or right. So there's options. They're still scoring goals. They're defending really well. And when they are at their full strength with Alfonso Davis, obviously that he's the X factor. He adds an element of fear that perhaps isn't there without him. But they're still a very good team. And I think that's so important. Even you know this window, Richie Larea has barely played at all for his new club. Um, Stefan Estacchio hasn't played very much. So there's some holes, there's some concerns perhaps without Alfonso being there as well. But the depth of this squad means that, that they can deal with these losses. James, let's get into that depth specifically for tonight. Obviously, Davies will be uh, missing. You've got Sam Adekube out with suspension uh, with the yellow cards. What is that left side looking like to you? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You add in that Stephen Vittoria, I'm curious about his ability to play as well, given that he's barely played at all since uh, the last the last window. But on the left-hand side, um, you know, you could see Richie Larea going to the left. He can play both sides. And I mentioned he hasn't played at all um, for his new club, Forest. But he's trained at a high level. He's played reserve games. Um, you can see Richie Larea on that left-hand side. You might see a, a young player like Vancouver's uh, Christian Gutierrez making his debut on their left-hand side. He deserves a chance at some point now. <laughs> Should that chance be in a, in a match in Costa Rica in this stadium? I mean, that's, that's a lot to ask of a young player. Um, but, you know, he's certainly got the ability to, to make an impression, and at some point he'll be given his chance. So they have that depth. Maybe, maybe Tejon Buchanan plays in the left-hand side up, up top. They have options. And that's one thing I think through this entire qualifying campaign that surprised me the most is that depth is, is for the first time maybe ever there. They are one or two players deep at every position, you know, and there's young players coming through as well, you know, beyond these current players. We're seeing Ismail Kone, for example, a young player from Montreal, getting into the squad for the first time. This guy could be a game breaker in the years ahead. So the depth is so impressive right now. And, you know, today, obviously, we must see that with the absence of uh, Sam Matakubi. This this was John Herdman talking about tonight's uh, opponent, Costa Rica. This was uh, John Herdman yesterday, I believe. Lance, can you play the clip, please? Yeah, I think they're, they've been evolving and growing as a team. You can see it. Uh, they're unbeaten now in four matches, three clean sheets. You know, they they were able to remain unbeaten against Panama, Mexico, Jamaica. Three tough games in the last window. And I think what I've seen is they're, they're buying in. They're, they're, they're buying into the coach's philosophy, which is a really tight uh, defensive unit. And then you look at what they've just done. They've suspended their league for two weeks. They've been in a training camp now for for 10 days, training twice a day, um, getting organized for this game. So, you know, the Costa Rica I've seen in November, I think it's going to be very different to the one we're going to experience in San Jose. And they've only lost one match in San Jose. So, you know, this group of men, they know this is probably given the circumstances the toughest match they're going to play in this octagon james i wanted to ask you about costa rica mentioned a little earlier canada won one nil in 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 edmonton the 57th minute goal but the the goalie spilled the cross and as i mentioned kaylor navis is expected i think to be in goal tonight for costa rica he is their talisman he's with perry saint germain we also know that they're going to have uh, ronald matarita who missed the last game. He's their fullback. He can be very influential as well. This is a better team than the Costa Rica team Canada faced in Edmonton, isn't it? It is, absolutely. And, and you mentioned Killer Navas. He's key. Um, Canada won that game because of a mistake by their goalkeeper, a, a mistake that Killer Navas wouldn't have made. That They, they rise up. They're, they're a taller, stronger team when he's in goal, commanding them. So, yeah, absolutely. And, 
you know, like, like John was saying there, this team's evolved throughout the qualifying campaign. A really slow start to qualifying, but 10 points now from the last four games, um, looking much better, very good defensively, one of the best defensive records in all of the octagon right now. They're a nasty team. They're physical. They're wily veterans. They know how to win the, the, the wrong way <laughs> as well as the mm-hmm. right way. And you add in, you know, you add in 35,000 fans here. And I know there's a big track around the field, but it's going to be loud in there. And I, I think I'm kind of with John here. It's going to be one of the most, you know, challenging matches for sure for Canada, given the desperation Costa Rica have. They need to win this game, right? And that might play in the Canada's hands. There might be more space around, more pockets to, to operate in. But uh, it's, it's not an easy game, you know. Far from it. You know, this is a team that's made World Cups before, and they're in a bit of a transition right now. Um, but yeah, to, to write them off as just uh, you know a, a poor Central American team is a big mistake. They're a very good team, and uh, it will be a massive challenge this evening. I mean, yeah, you absolutely can't write them off. I mean, you think back to 2014 and the great World Cup run that they have there, and Killer Navas inspiring them all the way. Uh, when you look at this match, James, can you give us a sense of what the public is feeling? Obviously, a must-win scenario for them. What's the tension like, and what's the confidence level going up against this Canada team? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've been walking around a little bit of San Jose. We're basically from the hotel to the stadium. That's kind of our life right now. Not that I'm complaining, fellas. <laughs> um, but I haven't seen much, you know. I haven't seen much buzz at all. I've seen more Canadian fans than Costa Rican fans, to be honest with you, gathering around the stadium. I did just hear some drums, to be honest with you. Now, it's 8.30 in the morning, so I don't know whether that's just construction. But to me, it sounds like drums. It's going to pick up pretty quickly, right? Because this, this is a pretty fervent fan base. It's not a fan base, perhaps, maybe like Honduras or, uh, or Mexico or Salvador. But you, you speak to players that have played in, in this venue and, and the old stadium, which is called the Monster's Cage, before. And they say it's pretty intense. It is nasty. So I, I imagine as they progress, we'll see more. But right now, you know, there's a few flags flying around, but I, I don't sense a buzz at the moment. Charms, we're going to let you run. I know that there are a lot of demands in your time today. Uh, enjoy Costa Rica. Enjoy the match. Take care of Arash Madani. Believe me, I know what a uh, chore that can be. And um, <laughs> we will chat again tomorrow. Thanks for your time, my friend. Thanks, guys. Anytime. James Sharman, who uh, is in Costa Rica with Arash Madani for tonight's CONCACAF qualifier. 10 o'clock on Sportsnet. Pre-game show goes... I think at 9.30 p.m. I think I saw on the TV listings. I should probably check before I say it. But the match starts at uh, 10 o'clock. It's Jeff Blair and Vivek Jacob. It is the Fan Soccer Show. We'll be back with more on Sportsnet 590, The Fan.